Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today's video, I'm going to cover the four lessons that I've learned RVing full-time for the past four months. And I've got a pretty big announcement to make, so stay tuned. <laughs> learn number one no matter where you go there you are um, not that I had this grandiose idea that when I got into my RV and started traveling and everywhere that my problems were just gonna go away uh, but I was having a little bit of 2020 anxiety issues going on uh, right when I decided to depart so that was a little bit of the reason why I started this whole journey in the first place was to really get out of my own head, to get out of my space and to uh, create space for me to go and create and, and work on the things that I needed to work on. Um, so, but no matter where you go, there you are, right? Um, my daily routines came with me, you know, when you're, you're living full time in your RV, you're not on vacation. And a lot of people would say, oh my God, this is such an amazing life you're living. And it's like, I work 40 hours a week still. <laughs> so it's like, you wake up, you feed the dogs, you make breakfast, you work, you know, the sun sets so early when you're not in the city, it feels like, or maybe it's just this time of year, but the sun would set 4.30, 5 o'clock and it would be nighttime because everything was so dark. So I would be in bed by seven or eight and that was my adventurous lifestyle. So uh, you know, it was really cool to wake up every day and see new, new sceneries, new mountains, new lakes and rivers and stuff that you can go and explore on the weekends and stuff. But I still had my daily life. I still had my daily stresses and my responsibilities that I had to take care of. Um, so that all of that came with me in my RV. It didn't, I didn't leave that back in Phoenix. So, uh, one lessons I learned is that, you know, you can create an amazing life and you can have these amazing adventures, but you know, it's just, it's not what it pictures to be like on Instagram where it's every single day you live that way. It's just not, you know, you have your moments and that's really cool, but you know, you still have, have to live your actual life. So lesson number two is I don't have to have everything planned. I know shocker. I'm the girl that has a spreadsheet for Thanksgiving. Um, I live off spreadsheets and organization and everything has to be so and I quickly learned that it's okay to create space for spontaneity and to create space for you know to figure out what's gonna be next I learned that it was okay not to have everything planned down to just the very minute and although I did have reservations for campgrounds I stayed at a lot of current campgrounds didn't do a whole lot of boondocking um, I had those reservations so I knew where I was going but you know the route on getting there and 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 what time I was gonna get there and how was how you know how I was gonna set up wasn't exactly a hundred percent planned all the time and sometimes I left those those plans early and I had to go figure out another place to go stay so I I, I enjoyed those times it was a little bit stressful not knowing and to get used to this whole you know because you can't have everything planned you can't plan for your black tank to get effed up or, you know, for these mistakes to happen. So you just, lesson learned. You just go with the flow. Lesson number three for me is I'm really okay with being alone. You know, I always considered myself a really outgoing person. And I am. You know, I, I cheerleaded in high school. I was in student council in college. You know, I was always the person who had a whole bunch of friends around me and always the life of the party, you know. And, but lately, as I'm getting older, I've done a lot of traveling by myself to countries all over the world, you know. And now I started this whole RV adventure for myself because I'm a single lady. And, you know, if I don't go out and do it, and I wait for someone to be in my life to do it with me, I might be waiting for a really long time. And I'm not that type of person that puts anything on the shelf waiting for someone else to, to get something done or to do something adventurous. So I hitched up and I headed out, right? And even though my friend Gina was with me for the first three weeks 
of my adventure, which was amazing. You know, having the time to myself was also amazing as well. If you've never traveled solo, I encourage you to do so. It's one of the most amazing, like, come to Jesus moments that you can ever have in your life because, and, and it's hard for me to even put into words, but you wake up when you want to wake up. You choose the activities that you want to choose. You eat the meals you want to eat, where you want to eat them, and you start to really learn a lot about yourself, what you like, what you don't like. So if you've never, whether camped solo or gone, you know, to a new city, just go to the next city over by, your, by yourself. It's an amazing experience and you'll thank me for it. Lesson number four is I feel really empowered. I was scared shitless to hitch up an RV to my truck and, and haul it anywhere. I was scared of turns. I was definitely scared of backing up. I was scared of mountains. I was scared of everything, um, but I did it, right? And so I watched a lot. And when I say a lot of YouTube, I watched a lot of YouTube. I actually stopped watching Netflix and Hulu altogether. And YouTube, YouTube is my go-to. Um, so I learned a lot watching YouTube videos and uh, I learned that I could do it too. So anything that went wrong, I figured out how to fix it and I fixed it myself or I would get somebody to help me. Um, so I feel really empowered. I feel like I can do anything, which leads me to my announcement. All of the lessons that I've learned over the past four months is the number one lesson I learned, which this is a, a bonus lesson, is I love living tiny. I love living in my RV. I love having minimalist things around me. I do not love the traveling. Now, I've been a lot of places in the United States, and the states that I chose to go to on this last trip were states I've never really spent a lot of time in before. So I'm glad I got to spend time in those states. Everything on the East Coast I've seen, I've been to. I have a huge uh, dislike for snow. Um, so I, I don't want to live in snow. Um, I really like the Southwest. So I decided instead of traveling around in my RV, I'm going to settle down and turn my RV life into a homestead life. And I just purchased 12 acres of land in Cochise County, Arizona. I'm really, really excited. I'm super nervous and stressed. Uh, just spent the last 24 hours here. Um, and this is it. I'm going to give you a tour in just a second, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. There are five mountains. There are 12 acres of just quiet and blue skies. And you can see the sun beating on my face. It's, I don't know, 50 degrees or something quite early in the morning. And, uh, I'm, I'm so excited about what this next adventure is going to be. 2021, I'm switching that RV life to a homestead life. I'm going to get some chickens. I'm going to get a goat, and I'm going to name him Drew. Who dat? Um, I don't know. I don't even have any words. It's just I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm sure you guys are going to have a ton of questions, like why I did this and and when am I going to start? Uh, I don't have an answer for any of that. And I don't have a plan, which is that lesson that I learned that I don't need to have a plan. I can just, you know, start walking the path and then figure out my way as I'm walking. So that's what I'm doing. Bought land. Check. Now I've got to get water. I've got to get electricity. I've got to get shelter. I need to clear off this grassy, coyote-friendly uh prairie land I've got going on here there's like a hundred mesquite trees and I'm looking over here because I see something flying but there's a bird um anyway enough talking let's go take a look this is it this is the land we're exploring for the very first time and I can say that there's a lot of grass and a lot of these mesquite trees, some cool cactuses, cacti, <laughs> and uh, there's a pile of something up here that we're gonna discover what it is. Oh boy, watch out. And there's more stickers over here. See? What is that? 
that looks like some kind of metal spring from an old box spring or something. But what is this pile? <laughs> what is this? It's so funny because I saw this from the satellite pictures and it looks like little rocks, like, you know, uh -huh, this pebble. big, like little pebble rocks, you know? And uh, I was like, oh, they probably just had like an old makeshift sewer. Little did I know it's from satellite, Julie. These rocks have to be bigger. And this is what it is. <laughs> what do you think that used to be? I don't even know. I can't even guess. It's a lot of rock. That's going to have to be repurposed. Repurposed. Repurpose. That's the word of the day. All right, let's keep going. You're saying this isn't dead, right? No, that's not dead. It just needs a lot of water. I definitely got some thorny something in my shoes. All right. Look, we could have came down here. Yeah. Look at, look at the thorns on this thing. I know. This is the big flat area. Like That's fence right there. These are my property ends in this corner but it goes through all of those trees, past those trees down to that fence, far, far over there is where the property goes. And an old horse trough. Oh, that was that Yeah. This is where the water pump is. Like in there? Yeah. Ah, you should, they should have come over and say hello. <laughs> oh, okay. We got an old building. We're just gonna wow I guess I'll be having to clean this up oh that's an old drill press huh oh the fan and some barbed wire that'll be help that was me oh, Kelly sure Jesus else? Christ <laughs> warn a <sighs> I'm gonna have to beat that out of the video there's a an old Christmas ornament. So I guess I'll be you can, throwing the stuff out. You can your, what is that? A tiller, right? Sure. Maybe some kind of trencher? No, it tills the soil. Oh. See the things on the bottom? I think I don't know. I'm not a farmer. An old shirt. Or yard worker. Oh, there's the other two tires. Oh. <laughs> and here's a water spigot and this is an old building oh look it's got a metal roof I'm starting to get overwhelmed yeah I'm not going in there it's like a prison a jail it looks like I guess it used to be an old house those are Ford tires because I found the Ford so the Generator goes here and then gets plugged in, but it doesn't work. I have to get a new one. That's my fence. What is that? Oh boy. Gas can. Handsaw. A handsaw. There's the ladder. 
So I'm going to see if I can see <laughs> if I haven't said anything in a minute because I'm getting definitely getting a little overwhelmed. Um, that's not my property over there, but it L shapes back. So it's like, I can't even see all of it. It's 12 acres. Um, there's some double fencing here, which kind of makes me excited. One, two, three, four, five barbed wire fence. I have a five barbed wire fence and it looks pretty good. I mean, if I'm a coyote, I'm not coming over here. Why bother? There's not even any food. <sighs> okay. Okay. Excitement is wearing off and nerves are creeping in, but I'm not going to let Ow. the thorns in my boots right now freak me out. It's just going to be some work. And once I get everything cleared off, getting the thorns out of my shoes, it'll be okay. That's my water pump. How do you cut grass? With scissors, of course. I got this square foot done. 12 more acres to go. <laughs> you missed a spot. Huh? <laughs>the morning we finally made it to the back half of the property so from these trees pretty much I can't even see my fence line yet still it goes all the way back probably another football field length and this is all mine this view right here is pretty freaking spectacular I don't know if you can see it, but my RV's all the way over there. So that's kind of the middle of the, I can't get over this. 12 acres is way bigger than I thought it was. And that's up on a hill and then it comes down and all of this dark line, hold on. Let me put my coffee down. All of this dark line right here is all mesquite trees. So these are the tops of the trees. So that means that's up on a hill. And then you come here, I can't see because the sun's in my eyes, but if you zoom in all the way back here, see where that fence post is? All the way back there. That's where the property ends. And then it keeps going. Can I zoom out? Nice. Like I said, I don't have a plan. I know I'm going to build a house at some point with these two hands. I know I'm going to have lots of gardens. I'm going to grow things. Um, I know I'm going to have a lot of questions. And I know that I don't know how to do any of this. Um, so just follow along with me. This is my journey. I'm willing to share it all with you. Every down to the, the cursing and the celebrations. <laughs> Um, just make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can get the alerts when I post the videos, and um, come along with me as I start this homestead life and we can just learn together. Make my journey your journey.